Hey folks, I'm back. Had some camera issues. Camera died. We uh, hit some snow again and decided to tur turn around. This gentleman in front of us actually was stopped on the trail just before the snow and let us know that we were going to run into it. So we all decided to turn around and head back. And as we were coming back, we found him laying in the trail. He'd taken a fall, washed his front tire out. It looks like he went down pretty hard. His bike didn't want to, it was, got the bike started. But uh, as soon as he put it in gear, it was dying. I suspected it was the kickstand sensor switch and sure enough, with the kickstand up, it wasn't depressing the sensor all the way. Don was able to bend the switch enough to where he could get it get it going again. He's dinged up pretty good. He definitely scraped up. His arm swollen up pretty good. And I'm worried he's got a concussion. He said he's a little confused. But uh we're in here pretty deep. He said he's going to take it real easy, so we're going to follow him back down. Hopefully we can get him back down to the dam and then he can figure out what he wants to do from there. Seems to be doing alright. Just going to keep it slow. Just want to get this guy back down safely. Even this green trail could be a bit to navigate if you're out of sorts. I think we're getting close to the overlook. Probably take a break, quick break there and just check in with him. Make sure he's good. Maybe try to give someone a call. We should have a cell reception there. Pretty much anywhere you can see the lake, we generally still have cell reception. So I don't know if I'll include this in the, uh, we just, we're leaving the overlook now. This guy is still behind me. He seems to be doing better now. Uh, I don't know if I'll include this in the video or not because I want to respect everyone's privacy. Or I may just cut out all the sections where he is in it, but... Um, at first I was worried he had a concussion because he did scrape the side of his helmet and he said he felt confused and stuff at first. But after talking to him for a bit, uh, at first I thought he had been drinking. He sounded like he'd been drinking, but then he, you know, I thought, well, maybe that was from the uh, hit in his head and I'm worried he had a concussion, but turns out, no, he had been drinking. Uh, I think he's, I don't want to say he's hammered, but he's definitely drunk. So he was out here by himself, way out in the middle of nowhere, drunk, and no gear. He had a helmet on at least, but he's wearing t-shirt, shorts, and vans. When he wrecked, he had the bike laying on top of him. The DR650 is not a lightweight machine. We had to lift up the bike off of him so he could get out from underneath it and then help him bend the kickstand so it would engage the sensor so he could put it in gear. I don't judge anyone for their actions. I try not to. I mean, I do, but I try not to. I've certainly made my share of mistakes in life and I'll make plenty more. Human, we all are. There's the waterfall. It is still there. But man, coming out here and drinking and riding with no gear on sort of a recipe for disaster. He admitted he's got a drinking problem. Said he has for a long time. I hope he can find a way to sort that out. I certainly had one during the lockdown year. It's the second time in my life I'd become an alcoholic. So again, I'm not, I'm not trying to judge or shame anyone or anything. I just hope he can get it sorted out. Thankfully, Don and I just happened to be riding past 
This is a Friday that's hardly anyone out here today. I was surprised we even saw him. We haven't seen another person be on the staging area and there's only like two trucks. Almost nobody out here today. Gets really busy on the weekends, but on weekdays, you're pretty isolated out here. Still going kind of slow. I just don't want this guy going fast and wrecking again. So I'm kind of trying to force him to ride slowly. Um, anyway, I don't know what to make of the world and coincidence and all that. I've tried to figure stuff out, but the more I try to make sense of things, the more I realize I don't know. I can just say I'm glad that we were here at the time we were to help him out or his day could have been much worse. We had originally intended to, our original plan was to ride from Copley right all the way out to the French Gulch staging area which I figured was roughly 40 miles off-road and then come back down through French Gulch on the street but we made it about we were at least halfway there more than halfway but it was 315 by that point we checked the map I, I knew we were gonna make it to French Gulch and all the way home before it was gonna be dark so we had decided to turn around I said, why don't we turn around and head back? And Don said, well, let's just, we look, pulled out the map and he said, there's a campground just up the way here. Let's go check out the campground real quick just to see it. And then we'll turn around. And so that's what we were doing when we ran into this guy. And he had stopped on the trail because there was snow ahead. And he told us, hey, there's snow. I mean, there's, my camera died at the worst time, but I, uh, was there's <laughs> snow on the side of the trail I said I'd never ride the snow again I was riding around snow but not through it technically but he said the ahead on the trail was completely covered in snow so we decided to turn around and this guy had gone in front of us and fortunately as we were coming back down that's when we saw him laying on the trail with a bike stuck on top of him. It's like all those series of events kind of lined up. Anyway, it's always an adventure of some sort, even if it's not the one that you planned. He is taking it nice and slow, so I'm happy for that. I think I can just kind of go at my own pace. I'll just stop and wait for these guys periodically make sure everyone's good skid plate doing his job we took another short break he needed a rest definitely gonna be riding home in the dark but it's all right this guy's got a wife and two kids to get home to I think he's sobered up a bit now by the time we get back down to the dam and he's on the road he should be good standing up feels so much better with these pegs and bar risers makes a big difference well I don't think this guy has a concussion we've taken enough breaks and taking our time getting back down the hill he definitely seems fine from talking to him and everything I think he's sobered up pretty well too I think he'll be okay to get home. Back to the road. He seems fine now. Thank goodness. I think he'll make it home safe. His bike died on him a bunch coming back down here because the, the kickstand is just, Don was able to bend it just enough to get it to engage the sensor. Otherwise, we're going to have to do a trail bypass or try to zip tie it up somehow. But Don got it to engage so we could limp him home. He said it died about six times coming down this last stretch of trail. Every time he hit a good bump, it was just enough to 
jiggle it loose and trigger that kickstand sensor. Jumps pretty well. Not as good as the KTM, but pretty well. Can be riding home right at deer 30. Not ideal. A dude who's a really nice guy, he's got a good heart. I hope he can figure shit out. Alright, creek crossing. Don't fuck me up again. Don't fuck me up. Don't fuck me up. There we go. Let's see if we can catch footage of Don. He made it. All right. This DRZ is an awesome bike. Have I mentioned that? Only thing I don't really like, I mean, the weight obviously, but you know that when you buy one is the brakes. All right, now I just need to not hit a deer. A little bit of hesitation there. Please, no deer. No deer. Hopefully I got some good karma today. No deer. My ass is starting to hurt now, but we are four and a half hours in, so still feel like the stock seat is not bad. A little bit of bogging on hard acceleration. Wonder what that's about. Let's do a quick brake test. I mean, these brakes do work. It dives like a motherfucker. It's no KTM though. They ain't Brembo's. I'm getting chilly. Woo! It's cold down here. <laughs> My nipples are getting hard. Oh, that's better. It was really cold down in that uh, little canyon there. Little bit of weird bogging or hesitation under hard acceleration. Damn, my ass hurts. Gotta say, I prefer naked bikes. That rally had put this really dirty air right into my face. This one, uh, nice, smooth, clean air. No problems. Yeah, I feel this thing surging slightly. It's like the fuel is not consistent. It's very subtle, but I can definitely feel it. My DR650 did the same shit after we put the uh, Breathe Easy carb kit on it from ProCycle. It was surging just like this and it didn't feel quite right. And then we put the pumper carb on it and the thing just ran flawless. I have something else isn't <laughs> Fox. Oh gosh. Oh yeah, it's, it's hesitating badly now. It can't possibly be out of fuel. Yeah, it's running like shit. It's surging and hesitating really badly. It's like it's getting worse. Great. Now what? Hard acceleration. Hesitate, hesitate. Yeah, something is definitely fucked. Motherfucker. That does not feel right. Yeah. And the higher RPMs, hard acceleration is when I feel it most. There's a kid right there. I don't want to be revving it like a prick. Yeah, high RPM. It's like from mid, when it goes from mid to high RPM. That's my dad. He's the carb wizard. See if he knows why that would happen. 
Okay. Well, it's been an adventure. Thanks for watching.